Thank you for joining us. I know you've been wondering, when is he going to have the governor on? How about right now? Our guest is Her Excellency, the Governor of the Commonwealth, Maura Healy. Always good to see you. Great to be with you, John. Thank you for coming. So our viewers know we taped this in advance. As we're taping this interview, there are questions about the fact that while hundreds of migrants are waiting, thousands really, are waiting for work permits to be issued so they can get out of the state's billion dollar shelter system, the number of permits issued seems to have stalled since late December. What's going on? Actually, it hasn't. The good news is we continue to process people. We've got several hundred uh, several hundred pending right now with the federal administration. We expect to get those back. We've processed 3,000 people for work authorizations to date, and that's important because we need to get the migrants working. The other thing I'll say is this. This continues to be a huge frustration to me as governor that we are having to clean up and deal with a federal government problem. Congress could have fixed this by doing a deal on the border, fixing the border, reforming our immigration system. They have yet to act. And so states like Massachusetts are left holding the bag. We had Senator Warren here in late summer, I guess, uh, where, and she was furious with the Department of Homeland Security for bureaucratic foot dragging in starting to process these work permits. Do you find that they're competent? I do, and in fact, that's one thing that I have gotten from the Biden administration. We haven't gotten funding, but we actually got agents from DHS to come here to help us process people to expedite work authorizations. I think we're the only state to do that. So that is progress. The failure right now, though, is really in Congress. They had a deal on the table a few weeks ago that would have provided more agents at the border, reformed the immigration process, also given states like Massachusetts money who've been having to bear the cost of these serious numbers of, of new arrivers to, to our country. And so that is incredibly frustrating and galling to me, outrageous that we're, we're having to deal with this. It's a federal problem and Congress needs to act. Well, the feds also are in charge of screening these migrants as they enter the country. Um, there's a very unfortunate situation where an individual who had been screened and allowed in uh, is accused of raping a, a young girl uh, in one of these shelters. Kelly Ayotte, the former senator, is now running for governor of New Hampshire, is trying to make a campaign issue out of your remark that the shelter rape shows that, quote, things will happen. She said, this is the problem with politicians. There are real consequences for dangerous sanctuary policies. Maura Healy should be ashamed of herself, end quote. What's your response to her? Well, obviously, that wasn't the whole quote that I gave. John... I was formerly the chief law enforcement officer for Massachusetts, a former prosecutor. What happened to this young victim, this 15-year-old girl, is exactly why the federal government needs to act, Congress needs to act, people need to do their job and fix this. I know, as a former prosecutor and former attorney general, that this individual who has been arrested and will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law and that that victim will receive services. So it's a horrible and heartbreaking situation, John, but it speaks to why the feds and Congress need to act. Well, what about AOT making it a campaign issue? I'm not, uh, I'm not interested in playing politics with this issue, John. In fact, that's been the problem here. Remember, it was a few weeks ago, there was a deal, a bipartisan deal, members of Congress, Republicans, Democrats, independents came together for a deal on the border to fix this. Donald Trump said no deal, no deal before the election, and they all pulled back, the Republicans pulled back. That's plain politics, and we and other states continue to pay the price. I mean, you're making a political point as well, right? I'm, I'm, making a, I'm making a response to, um, to your question that, okay. unfortunately, this is what is happening here, right? I think this is what But you're pointing the finger at the Republicans and Trump. I, I'm just speaking the truth of what happened. Okay. And, and unfortunately, I, I wish it weren't a political issue, right? right. Um, but unfortunately, it is. And we're having to manage it here. As I say, you know, we are, uh, we've put some, some parameters around it, um, some limits around things. Um, and, and we're going to continue to do that as we manage this. 
Also, importantly, we've gotten, we've gotten these people working. And Governor, you've made easing the affordable housing crisis your top priority, and you're lowering the boom on local cities and towns that fall under the MBTA Communities Act to approve plans for multifamily housing expansion. But as we all know, Milton refused, and other communities are pushing back. Even if the Supreme Judicial Court reaffirms the state's power to force this issue in the fall when they hear the Milton case, are you prepared for a long, politically nasty battle with cities and towns over the issue of local control? Um, I'll say this. I don't want to wait for the courts. And I certainly don't want to get into it with communities. As a state, as governor, we're here to support communities. The fact is this, John. The reason that young people are leaving the state, the reason that employers can't expand in the state, the reason other companies aren't going to come to Massachusetts is because housing costs are so high. We know this. How many people have young people back living at home because they can't afford rent somewhere, they can't afford a down payment? We have seniors, John, who can't afford to downsize, right, because they can't afford to find a new place. So housing is the number one priority. No single city or town can get there alone. That's why I support the MBTA Communities Act, which, by the way, the vast majority of communities have already complied. Mm -hmm. So that's good news, but it's not enough. I also put forward a $4 billion bond bill, allows us to go borrow money to help fund the investments that we need, the development that we need across the state for market rate housing, workforce housing, affordable housing, public housing. We need to do everything we can to uh, increase housing production in the state because we've got to make housing affordable. It cannot be the reason that people leave our great state. Look, I think you know I'm no fan of nimbyism. Uh, and I hectored you during the campaign about how tough you were going to get to crack down on nimbyism. But not everyone who uh, raises objections to this is, is a nimbyite, not in my backyard, uh, or a bigot. Uh, there are a lot of people who have legitimate concerns about overpopulation in the schools, traffic, and so forth, environmental issues. Uh, and there's people who feel like, gee, I worked and I worked my fingers to the bone in order to afford this nice, quiet cottage in Milton, and now, you know, they want to build a, uh, a high-rise apartment building nearby. What's your message to those people? Because uh, they're at the heart of the resistance. My message is this. Let's work together. And let's also remind people, John, because I think this is lost in some of the conversation. The MBTA Communities Act, which was passed nearly unanimously in the legislature, signed into law by Governor Baker, simply requires communities to rezone, to draw up plans. It actually doesn't require them to build any housing. So that's important because there's been a lot of um, outcry and, and some misinformation about some of this. It's also the case that it's not one size fits all. So we will continue as a state. We provided $60,000 to the town of Milton to work with them um, to, to, to think about how they could redesign and rezone things. We're still ongoing in discussions with Milton and with other communities. We want to find a way to make this work. The bottom line is we need more housing and you're not going to have young people graduate and be able to stay right. here. You're not going to have your parents here to help raise their grandkids. Uh, you're not going to see employers come here. You're going to see employers leave if they can't. It's the single reason when I talk to CEOs and when I talk to companies, John, the housing in affordability here, the high cost of housing, is their number one challenge for recruiting and retaining talent. That's not where we need to be as a state. I understand the problem, but when you say you're not going to force communities to build housing, once they rezone to allow it, then developers can come in and by right build the housing, and if the community still wants to stop it, it's lawsuit central, right? So That's essentially you're opening the door 
to developers to build this you know, what I What I do see happening is so many communities stepping forward and doing this. Yes, Milton's got a lot of attention, but Milton's in the minority. The vast majority of communities are already in compliance and coming into compliance with the law because they see the economic imperative for growth uh, for our state. We, we have to deal with this issue. Rents are too high, not just in Boston, greater Boston, but across the state, and, and so is the cost of housing. I gotta wrap that up, but one last quick thing. You can issue exemptions to this new law to communities. Do you expect to do so? We'd have to take a look at that. Right now, as I'm saying, we're working with communities. Um, they're, they're, they have their plans, they've come forward with this. It's also really important, John, though, that we pass this Affordable Homes Act, that we pass this law that will give us the bonding capacity right. to go out and, and do the work. Because right now, inflation, high costs, you know this, developers can't make the math work. So we have to work in partnership with them to do this kind of housing production. The estimate for the state is that we are short 200,000 housing units in the state because for for years now we just haven't developed in the way we need to to keep pace with where we want to go in terms of our economic growth and, and that positive tra trajectory. All right, well the bad news is our time's up for this Aww. week. However, the good news is you're staying with us. We're going to record a second interview which will air next Sunday. Hope you'll join us then.